in SMP, we can create the connections, right? These are the connection types here. RFC connection types here. RFC connection types here. Above to above, above to external, internal connections, logical TCP IP. These are the connection types are there. The same concept we have some theoretical, we have the types of RFCs are there here. So first of all, what is RFC, right? So everybody know we already discussed it. RFC means it kind of communication. So it is a mechanism that allows business applications to communicate or exchange the information with other systems. So it's a remote function call. So that will allows business applications, maybe SAP to non-SAP, non-SAP to SAP. The communication will happen. The communications the communication will happen both the systems here so that is the rfc right so remote function call here so here the rfc will use the cp communication here the rfc will use the cp communication here cp cpic communication here so there is a protocol internally there is a protocol here cpic cp protocol here so this will be used here. This will be how we are using the HTTP protocol for, for web-based request, right? So for here, RFC will use the RFC use the, the CPIC protocol to transfer the data or communication between the two systems here, two systems here. It will use the CPIC protocol. CPIC means common programming interface for communication, common common programming common programming interface for communication for communication communication protocol cpic cpic protocol so it will use the one of the protocol internal protocol to transfer the data between the systems here so this is a sap specific protocol this is a sap specific protocol so it is using a communication interfaces to transfer the data between two systems or exchange the information between those two systems it will use it here right so so what is the advantages of this rfc here first of all the mainly what is the advantages so here the rfc helps so this rfc suppose why we are using the rfc suppose we have the ecc system we have the bw system we have the crm system we have the PO systems. Suppose example, PO systems here in the landscape here, right? Suppose example, this is the ECC. So this is the BW system. So this is the PO system. This is the CRM system here, right? So we have the multiple systems are available here. Multiple systems are available here. Suppose sometimes, sometimes, not the sometimes, in the real time, we may have to, so BW, BW required the data from the ECC. So definitely we need to establish the communication here. And also ECC also required the data data to the PO, right? And also here, and also ECC required the data to the CRM systems here, CRM, right? Customer relationship management system here. And also BW CRM, there is a, the vice versa, there is an exchange communication is required here. Both the side communication is required, right? Both the side communication is required here. Same BW also ECC also required the data from the BW system also here, right? At the same time CRM, CRM, CRM also directly will get the data or ECC also will get the data from the CRM systems, so vice versa, vice versa systems here. And PO, PO also it's required the data and ECC also it's required the data. So both the systems, both the systems and PO also will connect to the CRM systems, vice versa, it will exchange the data here, right? From interfaces, it will, it will trigger it. So it will pop, it will process the data to the, across the landscape, across the landscape, the communication will happen here. So the main is the ECC here. That's why ECC is the one of the core component for the organization. It will happen the all the real-time transactional data, real-time transactional data here in the ECC. So once the transaction is happened, then immediately after some time, BW will pick up it out. 
then immediately it will go to the CRM and CRM will suppose many users, some users they will log into the ECC, CRM, so other ways, right? So here the communication will happen, communication, how the data processing will happen between each system here means, each system means there is a communication protocol, RFC, RFC, RFC is a SCP protocol that is the communication between the systems to communication between the systems here to transfer the data to exchange the data we need the rfc connection between two systems we required here two systems we required here right so that is the purpose that is the purpose here while communicating from ecc to bw it will use the cpic protocol to communication communicating between the two systems it will be using here so here while communicating here they are the types of connections are there here there is a types of connections are there here types of connections are there here so one is the synchronous synchronous here synchronous connection here synchronous connection here the second one is the asynchronous connection here asynchronous so connection here then the third one is the transactional rfc trfcs trfcs here trans transactional rfcs here transactional rfcs here the fourth one is called the so queued rfc here queued so queued q q rfc here q rfcs here so there are the four types of connections are there here transactional rfc and transactional so transaction so synchronous rfc then asynchronous rfc then q rfc then transactional rfc there are the four types of connections are there here in the sap so what is mean by Synchronous connection. So, okay, let's start discussing about the sync connection. Synchronous. That's we will shortcut. We will call it as the SRFC, which means synchronous RFC here. So, what is mean by synchronous RFC connection here? Synchronous RFC connection means so requires both the systems to be available at the same time. Requires means so here requires ECC and BW, both the systems, it requires both the systems should be available at the same time of communication or data transfer. It's a, it's, 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 it's a common type. It's a most common type. It is required when, so immediately if we want to pass the data, we want to, if we want to execute the something, then it is a, both the systems should be available. And once the, both the systems, so both the systems should be available at the same time then it will pass the data to the it will pass the data to the some other systems here then one then bw will send the acknowledgement to the so ecc well, because synchronous means it's required the acknowledgement synchronous rfc means it's required the acknowledgement from the systems here it's required the acknowledgement from the systems here this is the the first version of the rfc that execute a function call based upon the synchronous communication it will execute the all the function call this is the first version of the rfc synchronous rfc here so it will it will execute the function call based upon the communication here and also this is the real time communication this is the real time communication the synchronous communication is called the real time communication the synchronous communication is called the real time communication real time communication it's a real time so real time so data will be transferred from one system to another system so that's a bi-directional it is also bi-directional means both the side both the so by the bi-directional here bi-directional here bi-directional means so same rfc will be used to send the data to the here then the bw will send the acknowledgement back then it is send the one more transaction to here then it will send the acknowledgement means it's, it means both the systems are available at the same time. Both the systems are. So here, here, this communication scenario is called the real-time communication. This communication scenario is called the real-time communication. And the direction is called the bidirectional communication here. Bidirectional communication here. Right? Synchronous RFC means it's a first version of the synchronous RFC, it will execute the function call based upon the communication, which means based upon the synchronous communication, which means both the systems must be available at the same time the call is made. Why? Because if the system is not available, then 
this bw will not will not send any response to the so your system right then so it won't send the another <clears throat> another data to the bw system so it will wait until secondary if the bw should be available it will wait it here so all the resources which are there in the all the resources which are there in the synchronous so it will go to the so if the suppose if any issues with the target system is not available then source system resources like work process will wait until target system is available sometimes this may lead to be source system resources will go to the sleep mode then so then it will block the some of the resources until target system is available so that kind of so it is the <coughs> it is used for the communication so to the web server to the g this kind of communications will be used real time communication a synchronous rfc is the one word say so synchronous communication and uh, real time synchronous communication is the real time communication it's a, a bidirectional communication method it will use it both the systems should be available at the same time both the systems available at the same time then the secondary like the bw or second system will send the acknowledgement back to the primary means ecc then ecc will send the one more information so this kind of information will be passed here that is called the synchronous communication here right so <clears throat> then asynchronous communication asynchronous communication normally the synchronous communication will be used for the so <coughs> communication between the, the application server to gui communication between systems we will use the signification where it is used means between sap gui to uh, uh, sap gui to then application server then between two systems it will use the synchronous communication right kind of real communication right so then what is called the next next one is called the async a sync communication asynchronous async communication here means asynchronous communication so this communication between this is also like communication between two systems but it does not required any acknowledgement does not required any acknowledgement here so it kind of postcard delivery it kind of postcard postcard means <coughs> so i'm sending the postcard to you it's it's it does not mean that you should be available at the same time right it will be delivered two three times it will be delivered to the in case you are not, not available first time second time third time fourth time like that it will be delivered to you it kind of postcard here which means so ecc will send the data to the bw which means ecc is it does not require any acknowledgement back to the ecc does not require both acknowledgement back to the ECC. It does not require both the systems to be available at the same time of execution. And result is not immediately required to be sent to the calling system, means source system. Means both the systems should not be available at the same time. Reverse, reverse to the synchronous RFC. And acknowledgement is not required. So it is used in communication between the parallel processing where it is used for is used for the parallel processing communication between the systems source system so here so target target system is not available here it should not be available even though it will send the data which means source system result does not wait target system as they deliver them you see it does not require to wait for the target system should be available so why because the first communication is the srfc it should wait but here it does not wait for target system deliver the messages receive the data no acknowledgement no reliable communication since data to be lost sometime target system is not available so this is the some kind of asynchronous rfc here it kind of some asynchronous rfc here so asynchronous rfc means it allows user to have dialogue with the remote system users user interface it kind of so uh, not reliable communication. I mean to say not reliable com connection here, not reliable communication here. It's a delayed communication. It will use the, it's a, this will use the real time communication, but this will use the, so delayed, delayed communication scenario, delayed communication, delayed communication. And also this is also bi-directional. All connections are the bi-directional connections. Okay. All connections are the bi-directional connections here. <clears throat> but asynchronous RFC, it does not require 
any acknowledgement it does not wait source system to be uh, wait source, source system it does not wait to be source system to send that data so even the target is down also it will send the data to the uh, it will send the data here once the target system is available it transfer the data here so that is called the that is called the asynchronous rfc here so which means both the systems should not be available at the same time so this kind of communication it's not the reliable communication why because since data may last sometime the target is not available so source system wait sometimes we may lost the data also here so that is the purpose it's not the reliable communication here so synchronous and asynchronous communication here so the next one is called the transactional rfc transactional rfc communication here so it is a special from <clears throat> special of the synchronous it kind of special form of asynchronous rfc communication so this transactional rfc what will do it kind of transactional rfc same as like asynchronous rfc but transactional rfc will will whenever it transferring the data to whenever transactional rfc means whenever it transferring the data to the it in the same system or outside of the system it will assign the one transactional id that is called as tid for each and every transaction it will assign the one transactional id so so here transactional id even the target system does not is not available or does not so his target system is down when the target system is available then it will transfer the data here it will transfer the data here it will transfer the data once the as soon as target system is available using this transaction id it will transfer the data to the respective target system here here in sm58 we can check the status here how the transaction rfc state transaction id is in stack how it is processing and each and everything if we can check it out here so here in case target system is not available target system is not available then what will happen so the data will stuck in source itself source itself the data will data will stuck in this way it is the secure communication between the systems so it does not wait for target system should it be available here then so it's a reliable communication it's a reliable data will be trans data securely securely and without any miss data will be transferred to the so target system that's why this is called the so reliable communication reliable communication this is the delayed communication method this is the real time communication method scenario this is the so reliable communication scenario reliable it's a reliable communication why because here when sending the data to the target system it will assign the one transactional id in asynchronously so then if the target system does not if the target system down also it will wait the it will wait in the source system itself as soon as target is available it transfer the data here how can we transfer the data how it will transfer the data to the how it will be transfer the data to the target system means so there is a one one scheduler here there is a one program that is called the uh, every 60 seconds every 60 seconds it will check the tables every 60 seconds it will check the tables then there is a scheduler here mm, r s c r f c s r s a r f c this is the scheduler it will every 60 minutes it will check in the sm58 if anything is failed then as soon as target system is available it transfer the data to the so target system here why because there is a each and every transaction there is a transaction id is assigned here so as soon as suppose if i go to the sm58 sm58 you see just to remove the dates you check here anything got stuck in our case here so you can see here our case <coughs> here some data got stuck target system is the none means it's an internal system when it was stuck eighth dated eighth dated there is a user is locked so all the transactional rfc got stuck here rfc all the transactional rfc got stuck here so what does it mean me so here you can see here transactional id there is a 
there is a so each and every transaction there is a one transactional id assigned transactional id which is assigned here each and everything there is a sequence wise the transactional id is assigned to the etr so as soon as the target is available so we can reprocess this is the program executed this is the client here this is the transaction ewz5 then here what's happened user is locked here user is locked here so that is the reason that is the reason all the transactions got scheduled is the function model which is executed here right so this is the target the system means destination here rfc destination this is the rfc destination which is used this is the internal rfc destination here to transfer the internal related things here right <coughs> so who is the caller so basis user here it is the caller here so maybe it's lock that's why so all the transactions got failed here all the transactions got failed here so for each and every transaction you see there is a there is a transaction id is assigned it's a quite different here so even though if the transaction the data already received by target system then it won't duplicate why because here it will say so the transaction already edited all transaction already exist in the trans target system then it will be failed here itself then we can select it then we can delete that related entry here so here the functional team involvement is required to confirm whether data is really required really processing is required or not functional team can confirm here here as part of the day to day reporting here we need to go to the sm58 and check if any transaction rfcs are failed then we can try to reprocess here just let me try to reprocess one thing here there is a execute luw so this is the transaction id is this is the 2 triple zero to last two numbers i am remembering here right so then just execute the luw let's see so it got processed see here it got processed means during that that time we had issues now no, no issues here for testing purpose i kept this data like this so we have the multiple transactional rfcs are failed the data got transferred here see here the data got transferred now three four five six seven like that we have the number of entries are there we can process it we can select it go to the edit then execute luw delete entry so then execute luws all will be executed reset the status the status will be reset here the status will be reset here means all will be processed here all the data will be processed here let me see here see here transaction is recorded now if i execute 2003 then that will be processed here then see here 233 transaction is recorded it will be executed now it's recorded it will be executed the status is so recorded here right so it is due to the user lock issues so all the transaction why because it is using the so rfc destination so then user is locked so then it is failed the transactions are failed here the transactions are failed here right so this is the transactional rfc so transactional rfc in asynchronous mechanism in asynchronously when sending the data to the target system asynchronously when sending the target system even though if the target system is not available it will assign the one transaction record while sending the data to the target system it will assign the one transactional id one transactional id it will assign then so when the target as soon as target system is available it will transfer the data the scheduler will transfer the data here so here in sm58 we can monitor the this transactional rfcs and everything we can monitor it here right so that is the transactional rfc here so for same same kind of symptom right so asynchronous rfc also means asynchronous rfc also same but here it does not assign any so it does not assign any transactional rfc so sometimes maybe delayed communication so on them it may be delay and also it's not reliable communication why because if that id is assigned then we can ensure as soon as target system is available so the based upon the transaction id the data will go and target system it will be inserted here right serial wise it will be inserted here but here asynchronous rfc there is no acknowledgement it does not require target system should be available at the same time no acknowledgement so no process wise it kind of postcard we are not sure whether my postcard is delivered to my friend or not i am not unsure here why because kind of postcard here 
right? So this is a postcard communication. It's not the reliable communication here. But PRFC is the reliable communication. Why? Because why? Because it is assigning the one transactional ID to your transaction. Then based upon the ID, it will when when processing to the target system. As soon as target system is available, when processing to the target system, it will check whether the transaction is available or not already. If not, then it will process it. If it is yes, then still it get stuck in the source system itself. So still it's stuck in the source system itself. It will process it here, right? So this is the transactions, transactional RFC, right? <clears throat> Which means the remote system need not be available at the same time when the when the when executing the RFC here. It's not required to be available. Why? Because it's assigning the transactional ID. So make sure. So definitely it will process it here. Why? Because here one transactional ID is assigning here. So it kind of registered post. I can say here the transactional ID is the registered post here, similar to the registered post here, right? So there is some registration, one code will be generated that is kind of registered port here. Asynchronous RFC is kind of the postcard here, it's kind of postcard here, right? Then QRFC. So what is mean by QRFC here? So QRFC, queued RFC, Q, Q means queues wise, QVs, order wise properly. QRFC is an, so it is a next version extension of the TRFC actually, extension of the TRFC here. So individual, it ensures individual steps are processed in a sequence wise. Q means sequence, order wise. The steps are processed in a sequence. The steps are steps will be processed in a sequence. So there are the multiple LAWs, multiple, multiple steps, multiple steps will be processed in a order wise to the by specific application to target system, multiple applications will be processed. It will use the it will use the queues here, inbound queues and outbound queues here. And both queues and inbound queues, it is used here. So normally where it is used for this QRFC means this is a so so it is for processing the queue. It is it is for process order wise, order wise processing the queues multiple queues crossing to the one system to another system another system to same system it will use the queues here it will use the so in this way the guarantee of the transactions are processed the transactions are processed in a order in a predefined order it will process the transactions here in a predefined transactions it will process the order here so there is a predefined rfcs here so it's kind of batch communication. It kind of this communication is called the batch communication here. Batch communication, batch communication method here. So whenever it is sending the data, there is an order we will define it here. There is an order. Whenever it's sending the data to the BW, there is some queues we will create it here. BW queue, then this is a children queue, this is an adults queue. This is a ladies queue, like that how we will create the queues for free defined order. Same way here in the ECC also we have the queues are available here. So via this queues, free defined order, the data will be transferred to the BW. In a sequence, in a order wise, it will transfer the data to the your BW system. It will be transfer the data to the BW system here. Right? This is called the <clears throat> so this communication just give me a minute yeah sorry yeah so this is the communication means one queues wise order wise it will transfer the as a predefined order wise, it will transfer the data to the your respective target system here. So there is a queues we have to create it here. So from here, we are sending the queues to the this is called the outbound. Why? Because we are sending to sending out, sending out to the target system. This is the outbound, right? Inbound. Inbound means so here we need to create the queues. Here, let me take the new 
diagram okay so this is the source system this is the target system here so in the source system side we have the some queues here we have the some queues here right so this is the some something like this is the outgoing out right outbound queues like this is the suppose like cf this is a a star x star y star z star something like that we have the queues are there here so these queues are related to the bw communication it will transfer the data to the here so this is going to the here so this is called the suppose like here these are the queues here right so some these are the queues here it is going out each system there is a for each and every system there is a queues here inbound queues and outbound queues here each and every system for each this system also we have the queues here inbound queues outbound queues inbound queues inbound queues <coughs> inbound queues and outbound here so this is coming in right so this is called the inbound queues right this is going out this is called the outbound queues this is called the inbound in and this is called the outbound which is out here right so here this is about example this is the ecc so this is the some kind of like bw system here or some other any system we can take it example here so when transferring the data when transferring the data suppose like here some data will come some transactions happened here in this system so here some something is edited here what will happen so it required to, to transfer the data to the bw system as a predefined order so qrfc means it as a queues it kind of transaction it's kind of qrfc means it's a it kind of queues it queue predefined order order wise in the queue it will transfer the data to the respective so target system here so several transactions may pass in the batch wise as a predefined order several transactions will be processed to the target system so that it is a guarantee that the data will be transferred to the the target system here data will be transferred to the target system it is a batch scenario here so once the transaction is edited then it will it will send it to the respective bw system here then bw the data the data will receive it here here something will be edited here then then it will go out then again it will go out again it's required the something is required means again it will come inside of the system here again it will come inside of the system i can say in, inside of the system here communication so like that the data flow will happen here so which is going out right this is going out here it is going out here right so this is called the inbound queue for ec system inbound queue is which is coming inside of the system here which is coming in true queues the data will come to the inside of the system so data is coming to the inside of the system here which is going out outside of the system here this is called the outbound queues this is called the inbound queues here so where can we define this order where can we create the queues here right where can we create the queues and define the order and all those things here so for each transaction each sap system here if you go there is a so there is a transaction code is called the smqr this is for the in, in bond with bond which is coming inside of the system here right smqr then smqs q out scheduler q out which is going out out means definitely it's required the rfc destination suppose out means out communication external system communication means definitely there is a rfc connection right so ecc i did something like rfc communication let me create here okay which is going out how many connections you should want to assign so at a time time maximum run time is common right so i have created here so which means which means so so here you created the connections here outbound outbound means how it is connecting to the target system via rfc destination so you created the outbound connection so through destination it will transfer the data to the target system via this destination here via this destination it is transferring the data to the target system here right via this destinations here
so now these resistors are working then we can transfer the data to the respective target system here q out scheduler here so via this destination data will be transferred via this destination data will be transferred here right so this is the destination here so this is the out scheduler here it should be always inactive status here inactive means so it's inactive the status should be inactive only here right so it should have to be inactive status here so then here the queues are available should be here. configuration we are doing here the configuration we are doing here this is called the queue out scheduler outbound queues creation and everything here then smqr qr means inbound scheduler inbound which is coming inside of the system how it should go either cf queues or c star queues or x star queues x y star queues so there is a order actually the functional team will define this order here right so through this order we are the order they will they will create they will define it here x x star x y star so then x z stars so there is an order we can create it here the based upon this order through this queues the data will be transferred in data will come into the in inbound queues here inbound queues here right inbound mc ex queues for ecc systems the queues the queues we will define it here through via this queues data will be transferred data will be transferred here via this queues here so configuration smqr qs the queues configuration we can perform it in the smqr smqs we can perform it here sir where can we monitor whether <coughs> any inbound queues got stuck or not whether outbound queues are stuck or not so here smq1 it's a outbound queues here here just here we can monitor the here we can monitor the any entries got stuck here which are going outside of the system any entries got stuck or not here we can check it out so here we can check it out here then smq2 here so our inbound queues is there any inbound entries got stuck which is coming inside of the system so here here smq1 q2 are the monitoring transaction codes we can check the inbound and outbound outbound queues here so but qr qs is the queues registration queues creation we can do it from here queues registration so we can do it from here so otherwise normally the functional team will do this kind of work normally there is a one pi transaction code if i go to this transaction code Here there is a manage queues here. So see here queues here the queues there are the queues here to transfer the data as I mentioned. So queues XI queues all the queues here sender queues receiver queues. So just we can register all these queues here. So it's registered right. So then go to SM QR. You can see all the queues are 60 queues all the queues got registered here as i mentioned here all the queues got registered here previously no queues here here all the queues got stickered xx star xy star xb star there is a queues actually internal mechanism it will use it to transfer the data here all the queues got registered here all the queues got registered here right all the queues got registered so via this queues it will transfer the data to the PO systems or PI systems whatever it will transfer the data here right it will come come inside of the system it will go outside of the system so whatever it may be so it will use this this communication methods here right SMQR SMQS so inbound so transactional RSC means sorry queued RSC means queue wise as a free defined order it will transfer the data to target system so that it is the guaranteed transaction so definitely the target will process this transaction here so target will receive it here there is no loss of the transaction here that is called the queued rfc transactions okay so here here today as part of this one transactional rfc we discussed about the sm58 then queued rfc we discussed about the smqr then smqs then smq1 then smq2 these are the five transaction codes we discussed today right qr qs q1 q2 
so any registrations queues creations or anything one time activities these all are the one time activities qr and qs are the one time activities means whenever you build the system that time we will create the queues here then apart from that so we won't touch this queues here maybe any maintenance activity that time to block the data coming inside and going out then we will block this connections here right this is the q1 and q2 here we can monitor it here how the data got stuck data is processed is there any issues all those things so regularly we will monitor as part of the our day to day activities <coughs> okay any questions anyone yeah Ravi, uh, so for SMQS, when you're setting up the outbound connections, you need to define the RFC destinations in SM59. Right. right? Before, before that, the destination should be all exist. Yeah. We have okay. to define that. What about what about <clears throat> SMQR? What about the inbound? Uh, I know you defined all these queues, but how do we know which queue is for what? So there is no specific destination for the queues. Why? Because which are coming inside of the system, right? When it's coming the inside of the system, it will pick up. Then it will use the internal RFC destinations here. Internal, internal RFC destinations. There is a internal RFC destinations. Either this one, either this one. It will use it here. Internal RFC destinations. It will use it here. Do we need to define these or? Uh... This will be created automatically by system. Okay. Whenever you installing any system, it will be created automatically. This internal RFC destination. Without this RFC destination, system functionality also will not happen. So there is a multiple issues, multiple errors we may face it. To check internal RFC destination, this will be created by system. So this is the back RFC to receive the acknowledgements. So then this is the <clears throat> internal RFC destinations, internal connections and everything, it will use it here. This both will be used with the internal RFC destination, internal connections only. That's why, so you see, so just internal, coming internal. so it will be created automatically, we don't need to define here. If you don't define it also, so system will, system will create this one here. We don't need to define anywhere here. Why? Because basically in the programs it will it will define this one system will use the internal rfc destination something like that it will use it here so if i go to here so it is referring to the target system is the none which because within the same system within the same rfc destination it is using here transactional same rfc destination so if i reprocess this one it will go it will go and sit into the same system here so it is processed. Right. So we only need to define the uh, hmm. out, outgoing uh, RFC connection. So in easy, in if ECC is talking to BBW, we need to set up connection in yeah. e ECC system pointing to BW. And right. then in BW system, we need to create one pointing to uh, ECC. Right, 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 right. So definitely, definitely it's required. There are the many queues, many queues we can configure it here. So let me show you, let me show you in the real time. So how it will happen. Okay. I will show you in the real time. 